Yeah. yeah. And it's, it is, let's be really fucking real for a minute. It is not easy. No. To no. move out of that down, to self-inspire, to yeah. move back into joy, laughter, happiness. Right. So let's talk about some of the deep ways we can do that and some of the easy ways we can do that. Let's give some tips. Okay. Welcome to another episode of Talking Shift. This podcast is a place for people to acquire knowledge of spirituality, or as I like to call it, our evolution. We talk about everything from spirits, psychics, the Galactic Federation, the Intergalactic Federation, channeling, spirituality, like all the things, starseeds, earth angels, healing, but my favorite, the ups and downs of being in these damn meat suits. We'll share some practices, tools that we've learned to help you shift your reality. We're all in this together, right? I would love for you to join us on our journey as we share and connect with others and create a space of acceptance and empowerment. We are brave, we are bold, we are raw, and we are very real. We'd love for you to join the conversation. Welcome to Talking Shift. You're with myself, Dime, and today, Sarah Rose. Hello. Hello. Hi, it's been a long time. <laughs> it feels like it's been a bit. Yeah. Yes. We both yeah. have been going through, we both actually have been going through very different whirlwinds. Yes. We yeah. have completely different whirlwinds. I've been doing the hundred days of surrender on YouTube. So those that are following are up to speed on my chaos. Right. <laughs> um, but I think it's so beautiful that what we're going to talk about today, we both have sort of come to the same conclusion in and around the same time. Right. Due to internal stuff, external stuff, like yeah. life, right? Yeah. So let's dive into oh, what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I'll let you lead the way. So um, when we go on our healing journey, we do like, we call them deep dives. Like you've said it, like we go into this, like, I like to call it an abyss, an abyss mm. of like darkness. And it's Finds not an endless pit of darkness and despair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Like, and we're pulling out all of this stuff that we've either like brought with us through past lives or through this life and what we've experienced. And we're understanding um, our foundation, the conditioning around it, all of these little things, our family, society, it, like, mm -hmm. and it, it hit me last week of how like consumed we get by this mm -hmm. and so much that we forget how human we need to be. Like we are here where, like you said, in those meat suits and we're not enjoying our life. We're enjoying the aha moments of mm -hmm. like this. and But then what do we do in between? What are we doing? And I'm recognizing that like, I'm not listening to people around me. Like mm -hmm. I'm not going out and doing things with my family or, you know, you take a look at your kid and you're like, oh my God, it's been a year. Like how yeah. much you you know what I mean? Not that I forget my kid, but you, you just recognize how consuming it can be. Yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Like in my healing journey, which has been fucking long because it doesn't end like it doesn't end. Right. That's one thing that I really love to push out because people think like, oh, once you're awake, you're healed. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> end ever is an endless journey of a level deeper, a level deeper, a level deeper. Yes. And I know in my experience, um, like mid thirties, probably I'm 44 now. So mid thirties, it was an addiction because it's like, oh my God, what else can I find? I want to be the best, highest version of myself. Right. What else can I find? What else can I find? What else can I find? Right. And oh man, it takes up so much time and we were kind of joking around before we started recording this and you were like you know like a year goes by and you're like holy shit and I'm like yeah 44 years dude yeah. 44 years goes by and you're like wait a minute wait a minute and yeah. even though I'm very aware of I do this little thing where I take in like like an imprint in the good times so when I'm going through like highs or expansion of love or um you know, a retreat with a client, yeah. you know, or traveling or whatever. There's these little defining moments that I will literally pause. So I will stand still. I will take in my surroundings and I will take in the feeling that I'm feeling Okay. and have a little conversation with myself and all the versions of past me and be like, babe, 
holistic look. Yes. Look at your life. Like this is incredible. Yeah. Right. And that helps me move through the dark times for yeah. sure. And helps me keep a little bit more balanced that, because I think one of the things is for myself, maybe I, for sure, for me, I don't know about other people, but I'm pretty sure for other people, when we're moving through dark times or depth of healing, it's so consuming. Yep. It's like I had COVID last month, right? Okay. Fucking awesome. And going through it, I was so wrapped up in it. I was so like, oh my God, this fucking sucks. Right. This is horrible. I don't yes. feel good. When am I going to feel better? And then like day, because I had it for a few weeks, I had to turn my tune into this is temporary and recognize right. that that's what I was doing. Yep. Right. Like this is temporary. Like you're really do not take for granted a second of when you feel great because right. this sucks. And so I try to be cognizant of when I'm in that depth of healing of like, okay, this is temporary and I don't have to be obsessive or neurotic about it. I can literally right. allow yeah. it. Right. Yeah. But yeah, it can be super consuming. And like, just like every thing that you consume like that, it becomes that addiction. So then you're getting frustrated and you get frustrated with your kids and your partner and the life around you. And then it's like, I, there's nothing that I, but there is like yeah. everything around you is something to enjoy. Yeah. There, you are something to enjoy. So mm. oh, right? I love that. You are something to enjoy. Um, That's yeah. what I got my inspiration wall. Please. <laughs> Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> and do we oh, hold yeah. on? Let's just dissect that for a second, girl. <laughs> you are something to enjoy. That just hit me so powerfully. Am I enjoying me? Am oh. I, I'm going to be really transparent. I struggle a lot with one of my biggest wounds is my fear of abandonment, right? Mind it's you. a massive consistent shows its ugly head across the fucking board fear of abandonment and sustainability right to me those are two very similar things that I'm dealing with okay. and it's fascinating to me and something that I've really let me tell you've been processing over the last week specifically is looking back on especially in my personal relationship where have I unknowingly been attempting to force forward movement or yeah. force words of affirmation or force a necessary motherfucking conversation. Cause not only do we get obsessed about our own journeys, let's be real. We get obsessed about our partner's journeys. Oh, in our kids. Oh my God. Like, right. Yeah. Like I want this for you, right? <laughs> but I want it for you because I have fears of sustainability and abandonment, yeah. like selfishness. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I really have been processing that with myself on you know, going into these over obsessive, overly deep, unnecessary dives into seeking safety, right. seeking that solid foundation, instead of realizing that you could fucking have it if you would get out of your head. Yes. I'm wasting unnecessary time, unknowingly, subconsciously pushing for the sensation of and that's something that my partner and I've really had a conversation in and around over the last, like, I guess, five days ago, six days ago, this twin flame bullshit, yeah. you activate and highlight each other's strengths and weaknesses. It's amazing, whatever. So that's been really highlighted for me. And he's having his own things highlighted for him. And so he's emotionally avoidant. I'm a runner. So we're like, we need a break. We need to process separately. And then it's like, okay, we're being stupid. But it's because both of us are doing the same thing of overly analyzing, processing, striving, trying, yeah. forcing, I will feel safe when, right. instead of, let me understand your trauma, here's my trauma. And now we have this funny saying, instead of saying, I love you, we're like, I loved your fuck up. Like I loved, I loved, I loved your fuck up, like how fucked right. up you are, right? Yeah. Um, I'm dropping a lot of F-bombs, sorry guys, but like we're all fucked up in our own unique way. Yeah. And so now him and I are in this phase of like, I honor your fucked up and I fucking love it. Yeah. Like, I love that about you. I love that about me. Here we are understanding each other instead of the forcing of one of us moving through it so that we feel safe and secure, right? Right. 
And I don't think that forcing anything ever makes anything great. Right. At all. Yeah. So there's my word vomit. That's where I'm at. (laughs) Yeah. The last, I don't know, month and a bit, it's been different here. Like we've, we've, uh, we, we've had a house and then we moved into like a one bedroom apartment with our kids and it's um, not taking the time to enjoy the little things. Like we've been so stressed about um, the move and what that looks like for us and our boundaries, my boundaries are shifting. Um, And I used to be like, you know, a brick wall over my heart. And now it's like, okay, no, you got to open it up, you know, Mm -hmm. but by doing that, you're, I'm going into that whole abandonment piece. And then I'm going into like, the victim mentality that comes along with that as well Mm -hmm. right yeah so then you're going in and you're going in and then it's like you're kind of coming up for air but you're like why am I not having fun like what's going on here and like are things breaking apart around me and oh my god and then it's just kind of like okay no no Mm -hmm. that's not what's happening let's let's shed some clarity here and that was the best part I think last week about what had happened and transpired within our in within our week is that we were able to go oh so we see what's happening around us and we don't want that to happen so let's get back to what we want in our life what we desire in our life Mm -hmm. what brings us that joy we don't have to be so like oh because we really Mm -hmm. haven't lost anything we just felt like we did yeah yeah you know I get that yeah we're going through like there's a lot of deep conversation, right? Because we've yeah. had some time apart and now we're, we're in this again, doing it together, yeah. honoring each other's it's messed amazing. up shit, right? It's so it. amazing, but it is. it's not easy. No, it's not. <laughs> but it's been this beautiful journey of self-processing and realizing where I'm failing myself. Right. And by failing myself, I'm failing us. Yes. And He's going through his same process of where am I failing myself in order to be failing us? Right. And so there's been a lot of, when you see something that you want to fix, right? I am, everybody jokes about me being like full throttle in everything I do, which it's not really a joke. It's actually pretty accurate. Um, You know, I want to dive in and fix it. Like, yeah, let's fix it. We found something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my career, right? I can't take my career into my relationship. Right. Um, So instead we put a timer on we were like all right this is like this is what we did last weekend on friday night we put a timer on and we were like okay hash it out like unfiltered non-reactionary i'm going to hold space for whatever you need to dump vice versa let's get it all out on the table let's sort out what we need to sort out parking lot what we need to parking lot when the timer's off we're going back into something that's pleasurable right and let's reestablish because we can't spend all of our energy and even individually on our own journeys you cannot spend all of your energy in the dark. Right. Go in and find it, honor it, love it. Yeah. Embrace it, accept it, be aware of it because awareness brings change. And then move back into what brings me joy. Right. What makes me feel alive again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when we go into it that way, I found that like, and I'm going through my whole like, oh, I'm finding myself journey. And I am, I am. And I, ha- I had to go through that, that dark pit. But like, you can go through it and not lose yourself and still be, you know, where you are today. And I think that there are times where that confuses people where it's like, no, I have to do this. So I have to look at at everything else in order to like go into that. And sometimes you do, depending on your situation, I guess, but Mm -hmm. yeah. It's important to, it's important to become aware and do what you know will transpire it but to not continue to revisit it unnecessarily, yes. right? Yeah, It's catching yourself in the moment of feeling it. Right. Like last night I had a migraine. I don't get migraines, right? Okay. And this is so silly example, but it like so slapped me in the face accurate. So I have this migraine. My partner is busy. So he's got his own agenda going on last night. I had a busy day, ended up with this friggin' migraine to the point where I was like nauseated. And I apparently, the older I get, the more of a suck I become. <laughs> so I went into super pouty. This isn't, I don't like this. I don't want this. Like I couldn't look at, I couldn't do anything. I could just lie there and feel it, which is fine. But I found myself, I had a, I had a huge moment of, okay, 
when I'm, I ask myself, if I were single right now, what would I be doing? And this is like, blew my mind. I'm like, okay, this is what I'd be doing for myself. I'm like, okay, why am I not doing it? Why is it when I choose to be in a relationship that when I am not well, I allow the emotional turmoil to totally take over because he's not validating or making me feel better. I love this. (laughs) I was like, are you fucking kidding? Like this is, I was pouting and I was like, all I want him to do is come over and play with my hair to make me feel better. Like that's all I want. And I was like, and I'm not even that much of a, like a sucky, affectionate person. Although I find myself really opening up to that lately. Um, and requiring it, which is brand new for me. I'm like, fiercely, oh oh, I don't need nothing. And, right? Oh my God. <laughs> Moved right in. I laugh because I'm like that too. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't need anything. There's this meme of like, when your girlfriend's mad at you, she can carry a whole fridge inside by herself <laughs> and be like, I got it. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no, that's accurate. That is me. And so I'm aware of that. And this is how awareness brings change, right? So I became aware of that. And that's allowing me to soften into feel safe to right. be coddled. Like, can you play with my hair and pet me? Like, pet me and tell me you love me. Like, I just, that's what I need right now. I need to be touched. Right. And it's so foreign for me. So foreign. Like, I'm affectionate, but I'm not like a house cat. You know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, yeah. I'm turning into this, like, lap cat. And I'm like, pet me. Um, so, yeah, I'm having this moment last night where I just want my hair played with. I'm feeling alone right. while I'm not feeling well. And it's like, wow, there's some massive imbalance right there. And I'm fine. Like if this was a situation when I, if I was single and there was no man in my life or woman in my life, I would be like, all right. And I'd get my head massager and play with my own hair. I'd be like, oh, I want right. to do it. And I just do whatever it took to feel better. Right. But last night I went into this total suck of not giving it to myself because I want it from him. But the reason I want it from him in this, this state of discovery that we're going through is because I feel fragile. Right. And if I feel fragile, I feel vulnerable. And if I feel vulnerable, I have to be vulnerable, which means I may get answers that I do not want. Right. And that's triggering my whole fear of, oh my God, I don't feel safe and secure. And that's not on him. He's not doing anything to me. Nope. That way. It is all on me being in like, I've never wanted something so much in all my life. And now <laughs> what happens if, you know, like, oh my God, right? Ooh. My world. So how did it end? Um, it ended with me going to bed and playing on TikTok. Okay. And I was just like, you know, I was just go get some fake dopamine. It'll be fine. Absolutely. And I hadn't <laughs> finished processing it, right? And then I woke up this morning, still not feeling great. And, but I was like, that's when the processing really started happening on what my behavior was and why okay. my behavior was the way it was. So yeah. I just kind of laid there for a couple of minutes with like, you know, younger version of me and processed that. And then I was like, well, damn, now I get to do something about it. I don't have to stay in it anymore. Right. I can just do something about it. Yep. So then it involved a text message of, do you think you could come play with my hair tonight? Oh, I love that. And he was like, of course, babe. Like, yeah. And I was like, oh, all right. Problem solved. (laughs) (laughs) And you actually voiced it. So there's Mm, that. I did. I did. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a wild, slippery slope. Yeah. The healing journey. And we can go into these dark spaces and that's beautiful. Yeah. But are you coming up for light? Exactly. Coming up for air. Yeah. Especially when we're moving through the big, big things, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like sometimes I feel like Eeyore. (laughs) (laughs) I have a running joke. Frankie, my dog. Yeah, he's Eeyore. Like, oh, he's such a he literally sits like he mo he's Eeyore. So anytime you hear yeah. Eeyore, I giggle. But yeah, no, that's what it feels like. Just this right. Yeah. 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 And it's it is, let's be really fucking real for a minute. It is not easy. No. To no. move out of that down, to self-inspire, to move back into joy, laughter, happiness. 
Right. So let's talk about some of the deep ways we can do that and some of the easy ways we can do that. Let's give some tips. Okay. So for me, immediately, it's um, it's my son. My son is, and I would say my daughter. Yeah, like they're funny. They're outgoing. This, their smile, that's to me, that's, it's an easy one. It's an easy connection. Um, I would say a hard one would be to to dance for some reason that's a hard one for me to get up and actually do mm-hmm. that to move it out of me mm-hmm. yeah I find it easier to go for a walk or to go for a run but to dance I feel there's um more vulnerability with it actually hmm. yeah Interesting. connection to my body right yeah 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 for me it's <laughs> literally like I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, all right, baby girl, you got a choice to make right now. We're either getting up our ass and forcing change or I'm going to give you five more minutes. What do you want? And sometimes it's five more minutes. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, I get up. And for me, it's um, like the last thing I ever fucking want to do is go for a walk or a run. Like, no, thing. (laughs) I no. no. Usually when I'm really angry, like I'm down there. Yeah. Not not doing it. Don't I have no desire to walk outside in public, like not yeah. doing it at all. So that's never gonna work for me. Um, sometimes going to the gym, yeah, which just simply looks like in that mood, me getting my gym bag and my clothes picked out for the next morning's workout and just getting my head around yeah. the fact that tomorrow, like when we wake up, this is the day we're having. So yeah. I can choose to to be here all day, but tomorrow. The other things I do. Um, and it sounds like no effort at all, but I'll be really honest. It's a lot of effort to get my ass up off the couch and simply turn on music. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, I know that the moment I do that, my whole energy is going to shift because I have a playlist on Spotify for everything, every mood. So I know mm-hmm. what I need. And so it's just literally getting up off the bed or the couch or whatever down spell I'm in and just hitting the speaker and hitting play. That's a big shifter for me. Once I do that and I'm actually standing in the kitchen with my speaker, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to cook myself a meal and I will cook myself a beautiful meal and set the table and sit at my table and create like an atmosphere and ambiance for myself while listening to music, while cooking, like then create and I eat with like, nice dishes. I use a napkin, not a paper towel. Like I, I I sound so silly, but it works for me. Yes. It's like, and then I sit at the table and I think myself, I'm like, thank you. I love you. I'm proud of you for moving through this right now. And then once that's all done, I'll just dump in my journal. Like, what do I need to get out so that it's out? Close the book. It's over. What do I need to communicate with either myself, my person, my peoples? What is it? what is it that I need? So those are like the things that like push me through. I love that you mentioned the gratitude to yourself and talking to yourself and telling her how just like awesome she did. Yeah. yeah. I like doing that too. Like it's, yeah. It's beyond powerful. And I think people don't realize how powerful it actually is. Right. When you communicate with yourself and you tell yourself what 20 year old, 30 year old, 10 year old, whatever version of you needs to hear because she never heard it. Right. She never heard it. No one ever told her that she was worthy, that she was proud, that she was safe, that she was loved, that she wasn't going to be dropped, that she was deserving of what she has and deserving of more and deserving of her desires. I never heard that ever. I was never even told I was pretty. Like, it was just put down all the time. So right. my number one tool that I use consistently, it's a way of living now, is every time I walk by a mirror, I talk to her right. every time. And then I put mirrors all over the fucking place. Like I look like the most vain person. If you come into my home, because there are mirrors everywhere, I don't care. Like that keeps the healing in motion so that I can avoid the depths of despair and being yeah. stuck in the mud. Like it's such a powerful tool for me. Powerful. I find that um, showers, showers and baths are important for me. Mm. I need to go in there. It's like a reset for me. Mm. I love that for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
See, it's too much effort. (laughs) I like easy. Um, Baths are super important for me. It's a part of my routine. Obviously showering, Um, but I shower for function, for purpose, for whatever I need to do. A bath is like my luxurious, like self-care processing time. Okay. Um, So for me, I know if it's going to take me longer than five minutes to set it up, I'm not going to follow through. So I need small, easy, put on the music. Once the music's on, I'm like, all right, let's make yourself some food. And I go to the fridge or the cupboard. And this is how the conversation goes. So I start from sitting on the couch in my despair. And I'm like, all right, you want five more minutes? Are we moving through this? And then I'll sit there for a second and process. And often, let's move through it. So then I stand up and I go in and turn on my music in the kitchen. I'm like, okay. And I mean, I live alone, so it's very different for me, right? So once that's on, I'm like, okay, let's nurture our body. What do we want for food? You can have anything that you want. You can eat an ice cream bar, a Joe Louie. You can make a sandwich. You can make a full-fledged meal. So I go and I look in the cover while I'm letting the music sort of change my, shift my energy. Yep. And I go and I look in the fridge and then I'm like, at that time, I've come to a conclusion of like, no, I'd, I'd really love something nurturing and time permitting, obviously. So then if it's something, then I start cooking. And so I get all my utensils out and then I start the preparation of the food. And that's when I change. That's when I'm like, and the moment I feel that shift, I'm like, fucking proud of you. And I love you. Right. And I've got you and it's okay. And then I like pause into it's okay to feel afraid. Right. It's okay to fear this being taken away from you. It's okay. I've got you. And the crazy part is even if it does get taken away, you're going to be all right, baby. Yep. It's like, I've got you. I've got you. And that just shifts it. And in that shifting, it's like, is there something that I can now ask for from my partner for me to receive that's going to enhance this? Or am I really just safe and content with offering it to myself? Right. And then I move from that. And then if it isn't, you know, a message to my partner, it's about, I have to type it up in notes because one, I'm a grammar queen mistakes like all over the place typo queen so I type it up in notes read it three times and then he gets a novel from me that's very loving like hi (laughs) I found something that I wanted to share and (laughs) yeah can you just say that you're proud of me (laughs) (laughs) and then I went through it yeah and then like relief right yep so interesting because like I did a video this morning on vulnerability the difference between feeling vulnerable and being vulnerable. Right. And that's something that I have only been doing for about two years, being vulnerable. And because of being vulnerable, like I have way more powerful friendships, way more powerful women in my life like you. And a relationship that is going to be and is the greatest love of my life. It's right. just a little messy sometimes. They're all messy. I know. Your right? own life. I know. I don't think I knew that going into this relationship. Before him, I was single forever. Okay. And I had this big disillusion on love's easy. <laughs> I just wanted easy, but <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. Like a hundred percent, but I'm not easy. My journey hasn't right? been like, easy, so why would it be not. easy? <laughs> no, nothing about this girl is easy. I'm work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't make so, it easy, so. <laughs> I think I make it easy. No, I'm going to take that back. I do make it really easy, actually, but I make it really challenging in the fact that I'm like, let's fix this, then fix this, right. then fix this. It's like, calm your tits, babe. Like. <laughs> Just be present and patient. Let it unfold. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, how many times can I nurture this plant to make sure that it's going to thrive? <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so there's that. Yeah. Oi. All right. So we've got some good tips. We do. That's good. Yeah. It's a discovery process. 
And we all go through it and we go it, it I feel like we go through it more than once like you know like having to kick ourselves out of it like get out of there oh at least once a week for me yeah <laughs> yeah like no joke yeah, yeah, it, yeah. life is heavy it is not easy being in a human meat suit it is not easy being programmed I don't know any human that has had a childhood where they haven't been neglected right. or abused or um, abandoned, like we all have something yep. or many things. And so to have this unrealistic false expectation on yourself for being able to, well, I know better now. And that's the thing you might know better in your head, but your subconscious, the site, your cellular structure does not know better. Yeah. And if you had a dog that you rescued and that dog, so let's just say the previous owner would stomp its foot, then kick the dog stomp its foot, then kick the dog over and over and over again. Anytime someone stomped, that dog would be terrified of being kicked for the rest of its life. Yep, It's an imprint. So whatever trauma you have endured or abandonment or whatever that be, it's going to get triggered. You are a human. It's never fully gone from your body. And if someone has the audacity to say that theirs is fully gone, don't follow them. Don't No, I'm sorry. That's lies. That is not how it works. It Agreed. doesn't like the healing process is when you become neutral about it. Right. And I have moved through layers and layers and layers and layers. And I know you have too, yep. of becoming neutral of like, oh, this was the imprint. I'm aware. Yep. And if we, if it gets poked and poked and poked, it's going to get a little inflamed sometimes. And just being patient with yourself instead of losing sight of living here and now. Right. Or I would say um, bringing yourself down, like getting angry with yourself and like trying to force it out. Like, oh, why can't it just stop? Why, like, why does this always have to keep coming up? Mm -hmm. Because it needs to be healed a little bit. You need to move through it a little bit more. Like, Mm -hmm. like you said, it's always there. It gets inflamed. So recognize that. Yeah. Recognize it and give it some energy, some love, some energy hugs. (laughs) Some symbolic hugs. <laughs> That's all she needs. He needs. That's all they need. Yeah. Always about that inner being. Yeah. Wicked cool. Yes. Well, thank you for being so vulnerable today. Welcome. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's my new way. I'm learning to be. I'm learning to reside in vulnerability. There you go. That is what it is. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining. For all of our socials or comments, questions, or topics you would like covered, you can find all of our info at diamondknow.com. Until next time, stay brave, bold, and raw. Bye. Bye.